This is a Power 98.7 podcast. Now we're talking. Subscribe to Power 98.7 podcasts in iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. There's more on power987.co.za. Eight minutes past 10 o'clock it is, Power 98.7, that you're listening to Power Perspective. Of course, my name is Denzel Taylor. My next guest is in studio, uh, Vuyo Zungula, the leader, president of, of course, the ATM, uh, African Transformation Movement, uh, in studio. Uh, of course, not, not, not uh, somebody who's not uh, 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 living and, and working and engaging the issue of Gauteng. So it's not as though he would have come in and flown in from somewhere else. Uh, uh, he actually uh, is a resident here in this, uh, like, like the rest of us in this province of Gauteng. But of course, it's a broad conversation to have an understanding of uh, where the ATM, ATM is and in the context then also of 2024. So, um, I'm not going to read all the introductions and things. Here you are. You've been. Ch- I have to say. I have to say, Vuyo, um, and thank you personally. You are here now. Mm. Every time we called, every single time we called, as power perspective, to ask you to be on and talk to a certain issue, big issues, I might say, public protector issues of Parliament, uh, Section 89 issues of. Pala Pala, the president and the credibility issues of impeachment and all all the other things, your core challenges, you've always made yourself available. So thank you for that. That's what we must always do as mm. public servants, must always, always avail ourselves to the people. Mm. Yeah, the people being power perspective. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for that, Vuyo. Vuyo, you know, let, let, me, let me start off with a question unrelated to a matter of politics, but maybe related. I saw a report of recent whereby your officers were burgled in the Eastern Cape in Amtata. Yeah. Now, I know Amtata very well. I grew up in Amtata. I grew up in Port St. John's. Uh, and, and I was like, okay, headquarters, right, of, 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 of your branch. And, and I was and, – and then, of course, the language of the press statement that you, that you then put out – the sinister aspect of it. Talk to us about what you think went on in that particular space. Break in two days in your HQ. They take hard drives. They take documentation. They take computers. What, what do you do? You have that sinister, you know, approach still to what's going on or what happened there. On day one, which is yesterday, mm-hmm. they took the laptops, PT cash, um, all of the other electronics uh, valu- valuables that were there. Mm. And you could see when you were looking at the documents that these people were searching for some of the documents. Mm. Now, day two, which is this morning, when our staff got in, again, now these people, because the laptops that were taken on Tuesday, all of them, they are gone. There's no longer any valuable. So it would not make any sense now for a criminal who has come, taken everything to come back again. Mm. But when they came back um, this morning, you could see that these people are searching for something um, because the files were on the floor and some of them, it's like they open the files as if they are looking for something specific. Mm. So in our view, it's definitely something political because... An ordinary thief just looks at the valuables. There's nothing valuable in paper because Mm. uh, they've got nothing to do with um, any of these documents. Mm. But the fact that they were actively um, appearing to be searching for some information, then for the way we are interpreting um, the the burglary is that they were looking for some information. Um, do do you think that that is you attaching it to to the election campaign? You attaching it to the value of of the kind of significance and the and the kind of instances that you have played a role in? Some of the stories are the biggest that the country has had in in a long long time. I mean, the impeachment of the president is a, one of the biggest stories that you know have emerged in in the thirty year period. Um, the 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 institution of of what's going on in the parliamentary space, the court challenges, and all of those. So some of the big, bigger stories in in the over the last thirty years would have been ascribed to to the ATM and your intervention at various pointers with Parliament and or the courts and or with the institutions. Do you do you do you see it as maybe an indication of how this election is going to be if you are attributing it to to the election campaign and where your stance is on various issues? 
We really hope that um, these elections will not be defined by such behavior. Mm. We'd want to have a free and fair elections whereby people can campaign freely and there's not going to be intimidation or any form of violence. But what is true is that the ATM has um, punched above its weight and the ATM has represented the people well in parliament, which would, um, you know, worry some other people who'd want um, ATM to be permanently removed or in a way incapacitated. incapacitated. We'll recall that um, for the past two or three years, I have been receiving personally now death threats um, coming from unknown numbers. I go to the mm. police station, um, you know, those guys in the police station, they promise investigations that lead to nowhere. Mm. Therefore, there has been some considered effort from wherever to try and somewhat intimidate us as an organization from doing what um, we're elected to do. But we are unshaken. You know, mm. we are um, steadfast in terms of continuing our work because for us, we are representing true transformation in the sense that we want politics to be done differently, not have this kind of politics whereby, um, you know, councillors get killed, especially in case that and almost mm. um, just recently there was one of the councillors who um, was killed whilst in church preaching so would not mm. want a country to gravitate towards such, um, you know, such a situation whereby the political killings do increase the violence against political parties and people working in the political offices. Like it would want a different kind of society. Mm. If I was going to go somewhere with my next question and, and start at the beginning and, and go to, to manifestos and launching in 2024. But, but you know, since 2019, you've been in, in, in Parliament and you've understood and seen some of the aspects of you know what goes on in parliament you've been looking at how those engagements happen you've been very critical of how some of those decisions are taken either you know by the ruling party and or by the you know the majority in the parliamentary space themselves it's it's a tough it's a tough place then to be in specifically if you are one of the smaller parties who are as you say, punching above your weight, but still in relation to, you know, the ruling party, which has a majority, the smaller parties. Um, in, in a way where you might be saying, I hope that that is not the way we're going to go about this election. It's a dirty game at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the road. It's a, you know, it's, it's about winning. And if you don't win, you haven't, you know, and you haven't got any authority to have a voice or you might have a very minimalistic voice. So what makes you think that, you know, um, any election when politicians and what we've seen over the last five years and you've been in that parliamentary space, that it's going to be any different than what you've already engaged in that space? I think people are tired of the kind of politics that we see in our country. That is why you see a lower voter turn out each and every election mm. and other people, perhaps, um, you know, they are gravitating now towards independent candidates, especially at the local municipality level, because mm. they want a shift. So anything new that is coming about, whether it is, um, you know, amalgamation of parties or new mm. parties, people want change, you know, so they are most likely to try anything new as long as it's going to change the live realities of the people. Mm. People, in our view, want a people-centric politics, whereby more often when we engage either um, in parliament or in the media, we talk about the bread and butter issues that are affecting mm. the people and not overly um, you know, focus on the issues that are affecting politicians, the questions of power, because you know, the ruling party has been so-called in power since 1994, but you can't tell exactly how the country has been transformed for the betterment of the citizens. So in our view, we are on the path of just entrenching that. Let us focus on being people centric. Mm. And at the same time, yes, it is important to um, amass the uh, highest number of votes and win election. Mm. But at the same time, we need to do it in a manner that is giving confidence to the people that, these people are, you know, are doing things above board. Not have a case whereby, for example, we are going to buy young kids alcohol, you know, feed them with drugs. And later on, when we're in government, we are going to say young people must not drink um, alcohol. So there are some organizations or some people who, you know, do things that ordinarily are actually bad for the country mm. simply because they want to get in power. So they would do anything for that power. So that is why in parliament... Um, you know, this issue is very important. 
when I got there in 2019, I expected mm. vibrancy. I expected independence. But I got the complete opposite. The power was low. Uh, you know, you have <laughs> members of parliament that are basically captured. They do not have any independent voice. I remember one guy, when we were debating an issue, he was heckling at, um, at me. After the debate, he comes to me and he says, you're doing well, continue. And I was like, but inside, you were the one that was howling and heckling. He was saying, mm. then he responded, it's politics and mm. our bosses. That was my point, Vuyo. Yeah. That was my point. It's politics. And he says, our bosses have got a different view from what you are advocating for. Mm. And I was saying, but where's the independence from you to actually challenge your bosses on something that is, um, you know, in the best interest of the country? Mm. So you find that majority of political parties and now the MPs as individuals, mm. they are captured by predominantly business. So that is why when they are campaigning or talking on the streets, mm. they say one thing. But when it matters the most in parliament, they say something that is completely opposed to what they've been promising the people. Precisely because whoever funds you controls you. Mm. So majority of the parties, that is where they get things wrong. They take whatever money, but when they are now in parliament, they get to be detected too as to what they should do or should not do. Mm. Do the circumstances dictate politics? Because we are talking about politics and, and, and we are now saying, as, as, as that comrade would have said to you, you know, Chief, it's politics, what happens? Does it, does it, does it relate to the same thing where you, when you make decisions about who you work with and who you don't work with, how much of that becomes a political question then? Because some of your biggest criticism would be of those people who are heckling you and who we could ascribe the worst things to and say, you know, let's just talk about the ruling party because they are the ruling party. They have failed here, failed here, failed here, failed here. And then when it comes to specific times and instances, you find yourself having to make a decision whether you work with them or not uh, in, in instances of municipalities and provinces. Um, you, you've, made, you've had to make those, but those kind of decisions, Mukhale City and other places after the local government elections where you did pretty well, you know, considering, you know, the, the jump from uh, the national elections. One, one still has to, you know, it's, it's, it's that maybe it's the quote that says at the end of the day, you've got to dance with the devil. Is it, is it, an, is it, a, is it a thing of dancing with the devil at the end of the day? It's about taking an opportunity to be in a position where you can best serve the people. Um, because at times it becomes futile for you to always scream from, you know, outside of the room, scream about what should be done. Mm. Whereas if an opportunity arises for you to do exactly what is needed to be done, you need to take that opportunity. Mm. But most importantly, you need, um, you know, to keep your principles so that whoever that you are working with, should they um, force you or push you to do something that goes against your principles, you are able to say, nope, um, I'd rather quit. I'd rather, mm. you know, be removed from my position. Otherwise, um, you know, we always, as the people, need to take those opportunities that place us, is, that place us in positions where um, we can basically affect our manifestos and our ideas so that at the end of the day, we improve the lives of the people. Mm. How much of the religious space, the spiritual space, have you taken to parliament? How much of that is how you engage and and how you visualize where ultimately at the end of the day when you make decisions, they are made decisions based on that? And I ask you that question. I might not have asked it of a different political party, but I ask you that question because of your makeup and how you would have come to be and your relationship with, with African independent churches and, and that strong linkage to, to that particular space. How much of that plays a role in the kind of way you operate? Um, you know, the question of spirituality for us, it is part of our DNA precisely because, you know, spirituality informs your values, you know, whether you are a person that is guided by Ubuntu or not. Mm. Spirituality also informs your conscience as a person whereby even if you're about to do something wrong, there's, there's a voice in you that is saying, no, um, do not do this. Therefore, that is why most, most of the time we always criticize the ruling party for having a lack of conscience because when you have leaders that have got a conscience, it's leaders that will know that no man, they can't be given food parcels for them to distribute to the poor in their respective wards. But they take their food, their food parcels, 
they 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 give to their friends or they sell them and they allow people to starve to their death so once you've got leaders that do not have a conscience then the 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 question of corruption the question of not doing things um, the right way comes come 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 comes um, thereafter however when you are spiritually grounded and you know that you've got now like an inner voice a conscience in you that is able to shape how you how you interact with people so that even though you may be in this um political space that is dangerous that mm. is volatile but you don't lose yourself at the end of the day you don't mm. allow politics to swallow you because if we allowed politics to swallow us would be operating in the same way as the other political parties mm. but we remain true because we believe that there needs to be a strong focus on building the moral character of not only the leaders but the entire society in order for us to change our country otherwise we can talk about the economy the education and the land but if we do not build now a character of a south african that we 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 want you know there's countries whereby mm. there's a clear definition of dna or character of a citizen of that country but when it comes to our country there's nothing that defines us especially when it comes to good moral values so mm. we would want to promote good moral values because they form the foundation of how society relates they also form the foundation of what type of leaders do we have because mm. a corrupt immoral society will always produce corrupt leaders but a society that is built on good moral values um, which is ubuntu um, is going to is going to produce leaders that put the interests of the people ahead of their own let's go to the beginning then let's go to conception of of the 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 atm and and out of the church it is born um and my understanding is is that particularly those churches would have firstly years ago maybe had an or made efforts to bring about some kind of unify or unify uniformity between the ruling party the PAC the IFP and all of those particular parties not really succeeding in in that particular space what is it that brings about the decision that says we need an ATM we need to go to parliament we need a different representation from from what we have been looking at and trying to do on this side what 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 brings that about um you know um um the the history of the atm goes as far as the 70s and the mm. 60s etc but if i can that's, go, that's the time i'm talking yeah, and referring to yeah. yeah so if we talk maybe to recently now as um, as 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 now in 2015 mm. whereby majority of these african indigenous churches are of the view that we get approached by the ruling party they come to us we give them our support and their votes um, and our votes however when the time comes now for the ruling party to consult now the churches when it comes to issues of governance mm. they go to predominantly the mainline churches and um, they make laws for example how a 12 year old can have um you know in abortion without the consultation of a parent um you know a 12 year old can take a decision to vaccinate without the consent of the parent so which is something that is taboo in majority of these african indigenous churches because respect and the role of the parent is a very big thing now these churches got together and they formed a council of messianic churches mm. and part of the messianic churches was to have a desk that is focusing on church and state that is how atm was born born mm. now there was now this um call when the atm now was taken to um you know real leaders and the community based organization to say we need an organization that is inclusive that is why we are a faith based organization we are not confined to only certain churches we are a faith based organization mm. faith meaning a values based organization whereby we've got a set of values that whether a person is an atheist or as a person is not into church that much but they relate to the questions of peace ubuntu um servant leadership and accountability because mm. we believe that we need to drive now the building of the moral character of a south african true certain values such as peace ubuntu transformation mm-hmm. servant leadership and accountability so how do you emerge you Im- you are let me let me talk about w- what i would know you are in the youth space you are in the youth space and you emerge 
How, how does that happen? How how do people go and say, that's what we need to do, and you, Vuyo, you, you, we're going to go pick you over there, uh, <laughs> and 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 a youngster in essence, mm. you know, to to do this particular, you know, and play this particular role. How how does that happen? I guess I can say it's only God. Um, it's only God because I've never been in politics. I've never mm. been a member of any political party. I never saw myself having to take any podium and speak politics. But when the call came to say, look, we are starting this organization, which is now the council, please head this um, church and state because you've got qualities in you that would make, um, um, you know, make meaningful contributions. Mm. From there, I was then requested to, um, you know, facilitate the registration of the ATM. So Mm. um, I was involved from getting the initial 500 signatures, um, you know, submitting them to the IEC, etc. Mm. Now, the other responsibility was to go around the different churches to present to them what is ATM and why is it important for people. The blueprint. Yeah, wh- why mm. is it important for now the people who are normally in church to involve themselves mm. in politics? And then from me going to now to these different organizations, the powers that be saw that okay, this <laughs> this fellow, this young man can actually you know do the work, and mm. you know that is why I always say it is by God's grace because I never had any of that expertise and experience, but it is God that carried me through ever since He gave me this responsibility. Answer me this: Was there a belief that within the churches, millions in numbers? that with that association that that indigenous churches the african indigenous churches that that could materialize into votes and votes by the millions was there at the initial stage that kind of belief is there still that kind of belief and we'll go to the numbers of 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 uh, 2019 and then we'll go to the numbers of 2021 but but initially at the beginning was there kind of a euphoria that said if there are 8 million 5 million 7 million people within the the indigenous churches if we worked this and did this proper and every person became a potential person to vote the numbers were massive it, was that a reality was that something that was being thought about and and you know, thought about that that could become a reality. Definitely. That is why even the ruling party, um, you know, they came with some sort of mechanisms to try and destabilize our campaign in 2019. You know, in 2019, if you were to recall, we were in the media a lot, um, I think between March and April before the elections that were in May. Now, but we're in media a lot precisely because we're trying to deal with some of the, you know, the the destruction of our campaigns will recall mm. that at one time there was this media campaign that we are not going to be in the ballot paper, mm. we're going to be deregistered. You, there, there was an issue before the IEC in that regard. Exactly. Mm. And there was also this issue that we were a, a Zuma or H. Mahashule party. Mm. So there was a considered effort to try and, you know, turn members um, you know, convince members against voting for ATM. Mm. It's only years later that people realize, but no, they, they, there's no way in which the ATM, for example, is a Esma Khashule party or Mr. Zuma party because these people started their own parties. And the commission of inquiry that was done by Mr. Montlante and Dr. Frin Jinwala of the ANC actually cleared the ATM that there's no one from the ANC that is involved in the formation, in the operations of ATM. But if you look at the interest that was there, because there's the evidence is clear that some of the people that were spreading all of that propaganda mm. were actually in cahoots with um, some of the leaders of the ANC. The unfortunate thing for you is is that in, 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 in some cases, rumor and, and by implication maybe trying to throw mud at you, but that rumor stuck and and you know that kind of thing has followed you into your existence that's the unfortunate of it yeah that is very unfortunate but you know what we would like to have ne, is to to just educate the people to say the ANC as a ruling party has always always had a program of action to try and destabilize did it help mm. did it help that Mzwanela Mani who at that particular point was 
you know, engaged with, you know, the former president and all, all of those things. And then if you say ace and you say the president at that particular time, there was also the reference to the Guptas because it was at that particular time that they were saying it. And that particular time connected them and all of them to a particular point. So in essence, then what you were also being connected to was in essence the Gupta family. I'll tell you a story of, 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 of you, you, you might smile when you hear it, is, is that in essence, somebody had suggested that the ATM came about um, and, and, and sadly so, because an ATM is where you go and you get your money, right? <laughs> the ATM is where you go and you draw your money. Mm. And, and, and the, the, the irony of the whole thing was that people had created an ATM mm. so that they co- could go and get their money through the Guptas because it couldn't flow in any other way, but it could flow through this ATM. Mm. And, you know, and people were looking at the irony of the name and the irony of the situation that was at play. What do you, what did you, what do you make of all of that, which, which is still in some sense still there? I think the the media is very sensational. And when it comes to our politics, the media loves personality politics. So imagine a 2019 beginning of the year, January, uh, Mr. Mzwane Lemani, that is well known at the time, mm. joins ATM. And in that press conference, he does introduce the ATM leadership or say that mm. I'm joining this party that is led by these people. Mm. I remember the I remember um, it. the yeah. very senior members of the ATM were there. Mm. And after he joined, I read on behalf of the NEC a statement um, welcoming him. Mm. And it was very clear who the president is. Now, there are issues that who is this now 31 year old, um, you know, that is seemingly um, just rushed from work where, wherever he's working. Mm to get to this press conference and maybe after he needs to rush back to work again. Mm. In their minds, they could not understand how a well-known figure such as Mr. Mzwane Lemanyi could not be a president. And this Mm. young chap that is not known, has no political um, brand that Mm. is associated with him, is president. Simply because in their view... For, the, for you to lead a political party, mm. you need to have that all of that kind of experience and personality and all of those things. Mm. So that is why you find that other people, I remember who's this lady, Farrell Hafaji, mm. um, even called me a former DA leader because mm. at the time, remember, the media is, 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 is just trying to um, get any form of information, what, write whatever they could mm. write. And they were wrong. They were wrong about me being a former DA leader. They were wrong about the association with the Guptas, mm. Mr. Zuma, etc. It, it didn't help you that at that same press conference, as I remember it, um, Zwanele Mani, as, as you would say, the media had a particular, you know, um, uh, narrative that they were pushing, right? It didn't help you that when... Um, and and maybe it did, but but it came across was when a question was asked and somebody said, "Would you take money from the Guptas?" Mzwala Namani said, stood up and said, "Yes, if the Guptas want to give me twenty million rand tomorrow, you know, for this political party, I will take it." And 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 people were like, mm, "Okay, right, I see the flow of money to this ATM now, you know, to this political party." So so there were things that you would, as you point out now you know, that would have been ignored in how you started and things would have been attributed to you because of the time and the place and maybe the motives also that wanted or needed to be achieved. Yeah, if you check the period of 2018 and 2019, it was a transition kind of between Mm. the radical economic transformation policies of the former president and the new dawn of um, Mm. President Ramaphosa. So, you find that now, um, you know, the, the, the media coverage and the stories mm. were centered around basically that kind of a transition. So um, for us as an organization, because now uh, Mr. Mzwane Lemani, that was associated with mm. the former president joining us, then it might have made many people to believe that mm. we are coming from, um, you know, the, 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 the ANC um, were actually a breakaway, but yeah, we're yeah, not. So. Yeah. But we're glad that now, whenever that we talk ATM, majority of mm. the people know exactly who we are. Was and there any? Was there any twenty million? Was there anything there's, close to? That? There's nothing. You know, if you look at our finances, you can tell that hey, these people shame by Azam. They are they are depending on their members. We mm. are not 
anywhere funded by the Guptas. You were not the you were not the ATM through which the money flowed from the Guptas <laughs> to <laughs> to politicians. Nothing of that sort. Um, we've always been funded by our members, and um, that is why you find that we are able to champion and spawn mm. about everything because we've got that independence. If you yeah. look at, for example. The question of Palapale, there's bigger parties that have mm. fought Gandlas and the other issues. But on the question of Palapala, they remain silent. And they mm. were awaiting ATM to take the lead. And mm. you ask yourself, if they were fighting, um, you know, questions of corruption or abuse of power from a principal point of view, mm. they should be consistent. Look at the question of the RAN manipulation. Mm. It's us that said Parliament debate this. Mm. President create a commission of inquiry because... We do not have bankers that are dictating to us. Mm. So the crux of our problems as a country, it is political parties that are funded by people that have got vested interests and those political parties end up being the mouthpiece or the representatives of their funders instead of Mm. um, being the mouthpiece of the people. Sure. Let me me ask you um, a question then related to... 2019 and then 2021 do you think that those i would assume your answer would be no because of what was going on there in the historical context we've just sketched that 2019 and 2021 were not true reflections of the size and the magnitude or of the atm you 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 probably think that it's it's showed so much growth in the local government elections from the growth that that was there in the national elections of 2019 it's almost like there were two that these were two different political parties you you in essence let me just go to those particular numbers if i if i have them 2019 what did you get where where is that particular number should be 78000 in um national 78000 76830 yeah which was um, 0.44% seats two out of 400. And then in 2019, no, in 2021, you get 189 uh, votes, 900, well, 100 and, 190 in essence, 190,000 in essence, because rounding up the 943. Uh, seats 53, seats 53. Yeah, it, I it, mean, those, it was almost like black and white, uh, a different party. Yeah, it shows how in 2019, that negative media coverage, you know, in 2019, the Sunday, um, when there's a Sunday and on the Monday, you start with the special votes. Mm. On the Sunday, Sunday Times has got um, a big campaign. I'm saying it's a big campaign because I've never seen billboards from the Sunday Times as much as that particular weekend. Mm. Now, these billboards were saying Ace's hand in the ATM. So obviously, one or two days before the um, the election, you've got now this publication that is able to put posters every corner of the country saying there's an ace's hand in the ATM. The, ANC, the ANC even had to investigate that particular exactly. aspect. Mm. And funny enough is that when the ANC investigates and comes back and clears Mr. Mahashulo from being involved and in the Jacob ATM Zuma. Mm. and Mr. Zuma, the media does not equally report in the same light they reported the allegations. So in 2019, that is what influenced people from voting um, ATM. Now, in 2021, obviously, Mm. people are getting to see that no, we're misled. And in 2024, there's going to be millions of people that are going to vote for the ATM because they've seen that, number one, ATM has got nothing to do with all of those individuals. Mm. And most importantly, ATM has been able to practically provide solutions to all of the problems that we face in our country. You've hit the road already. You're campaigning. Campaigning. Just mm. today, I was in Janfes in Lipopo, mm. um, where we have a community-based organization that has committed to join and campaign the ATM. And I like what they said. They said, mm. we're not joining because you came here to promise us money. There's many parties that came to us and promised us a lot of things. But we like how you as an organization, you are very genuine Mm. and you are people centric in the sense that whenever that we take a platform to address whatever issue um, as an ATM is able to spell it out, what the problem is, what are the consequences of the problem? But most importantly, what are the solutions? Because people are looking for solutions and whenever they see or hear ATM, whether it's a question of crime, unemployment, um, you know, um, energy, we have provided solutions that make people to believe 
that under the ATM government, a lot of things um, that are going wrong in our country could be rectified. Let's go to um, the manifesto, and and you've you've already launched your your political campaign. That of course was Nelson Mandela uh, last year. That's why I said uh, you already you've already hit the road. You're already campaigning. Um, you you still will, of course, you know, in various Gauteng and probably in some other provinces have, you know, some other events as well to begin to talk about your manifesto and launch and and do the other things that other political parties would do. But your your manifesto, in essence, is a pretty easy one. Uh, it's it's ending corruption. Investing in education, ensuring peace and and security, uh, also empowering the youth, women, people with disabilities, and um, you advocate for the African way of living, African way of resolving problems. Pretty, pretty. If you go through, you know, the, the manifesto, not not too complicated. You've kept it simple. You're saying this is what this what we what we stand for, and then you're over here on page ninety nine where capital punishment is is concerned and the death penalty. And um, people will look and say, well, all of these others go ending corruption, yes, um, investing. And then suddenly, you know, um, yes, we also we also want capital punishment. We also want the death penalty to, to come back. That hasn't shaken, that hasn't moved, that's still where you are. Definitely. We're of the view that there are some criminals in our country that have shown time and time again that they refuse to coexist with other people. Mm-hmm. And their mere existence is a threat to the lives of innocent, abiding, law-abiding citizens. There's been cases whereby um, prison wardens who are basically doing what, um, you know, what, they, what they are employed to do, which is to, which is to guard those prisoners. But mm-hmm. they are also not safe because they are killed even in prison. So what of the views an organization that in instances whereby there's heinous crimes and there's repeat, mm. um, you know, murders from people, we cannot have a society that is seemingly welcoming or, um, you know, being okay with such behavior. We need to permanently remove such people from our society and not allow a case whereby we are going to say um, right to life to criminals who do not respect the right to life of innocent law-abiding citizens. Sure. We've, we've got a voice note. Uh, which has come through, um, and we're going to hear it. I've also got a question here that says, Uncle Taylor, which is which is me, uh, <laughs> please ask him about the Cape Exit uh, uh, initiative, and that's Tab Biso on, uh, on X, which is, of course, on Twitter. Let's listen to the voice note. Uh, you've got your headphones on. Hi, Denzel. <clears throat> Mandla here from Marisol, uh, Pretoria. So I'm trying to... Okay, I joined this conversation a little bit late, so do apologize if these uh, points were, were mentioned. What are the um, points that they are raising in their manifesto so that we all can understand? The spirituality is part of what I love, but uh, I don't know what age is that. Sure, sure. So, so I, I think I've just asked that question, but maybe talk to it. Talk to your manifesto. Um our points in the manifesto, the first one deals with, um, you know, the economy. We are of the view that the economy must be transformed in order to get many people to be economi- economically active because mm. there's high rates of unemployment and poverty. So for us to live in a better country, we need the top priority is getting people to be economically active. And the way to do that is that, number one, change government spending to move towards small businesses because Everywhere in the world, it has been proven that they are biggest creators of jobs, even in South Africa. Number two, process all of the raw materials here in South Africa and export finished products instead Mm. of exporting raw materials and then you buy them later um, as expensive finished products. Number three, we can't be um, uh, economically colonized by China. It can't be that when you go home, almost everything that is there from your plates, from your TVs, from mm. everything. Are is, you out of Brexit? Um, is made in China. If you were, if you were in charge tomorrow. No, no, no. Out. We stay in, um, we stay um, in Briggs. However, yeah. we boost our local manufacturing so that mm. we only import what we gotcha. can't make, okay. and not have a case whereby we basically import everything. Because that is why our we do not we do not create jobs in our country because. We create jobs in other countries by um, importing mm. a lot of things from other countries. And key to um, our economic um, policy plan 
is the transformation of the township economy because the township now they are defined by drugs, unemployment and all of the social ills. Mm. However, if we focus on how do we make money in the township to circulate mm. amongst the people in the townships because the highest levels of unemployment and poverty is there. By utilizing again the cooperatives whereby we've got so many cooperatives in the country whereby people are producing things on their own. So we're of the view that the government must intervene mm. by you know, plugging these cooperatives into the economic space. For example, if you've got a child that is going to a private school, mm. that private school is going to tell you, this is where you buy the uniform. Now, of the view that if now the government can go, for example, in, um, you know, or Tambo, where you come from, where, for example, in the Port St. John's area, mm. where they will say, we've got so many cooperatives, therefore, the hundred schools that are in the region, mm. these are the preferred cooperatives mm. where to buy uniform. It means those people that are running those cooperatives are going to be able to make a living, unlike now, whereby our economy is dominated by few companies, because, you are, for example, on the question of, Uniform, you're going to have student price or mm. prints that is dominating everywhere, whether you are in Port St. John's or in Guiani. Mm. However, the, 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 the cooperatives that are in Port St. John's are going to make people of Port St. John's to be economically active. Mm. The cooperatives of Guiana are going to make people in Guiani to be economically active. And then we are going to have various and diverse players in the economy instead of this economy where we have now, whereby there's only five or six companies in each and every industry that are having more than 90% mm. of the market share. So that was the, 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 the issue of the, the, the economy. The mm. second issue is the law and order, where we believe that, number one, increase the number of police that are there in order to increase the ratio between um, the citizens and the police and improve police visibility by employing the many police reserves that are there and you adequately train them to take statements, to do investigations so that they are able to solve the crimes. And at the same time, be very harsh, especially on public servants, whether it's politicians, it's public officials, mm. um, you know, that are committing any forms of corruption and crime because they are the ones that are betraying the trust of citizens on the state. And again, you need to make sure that all of the prisoners in prison are working for the state for free because currently now many of the prisoners find it lucrative to be in prison because they are guaranteed three meals. Um, you know, they have got TikToks. You find that, you know, when you go on Twitter, sometimes you find videos um, of them, um, you know, having fun, whereas they are living in prison at the expense um, of the, the their victims. So prisoners must work for the state for free and um, do work that will mm. end them their place in society. And then the last one is the question of education because we have the view that education is an investment because once you capacitate your people, then it allows your people to be able to be able to be economically active in future. So we're talking about mm. ensuring that, number one, you improve the infrastructure in the public schooling service so that immediately when you go to a public school, our children there can feel that they're in an environment of learning, unlike a depressed um, you know, environment whereby there's broken um, um, windows, there's pit toilets and all of those things. And when you focus now on early childhood development to make sure that children are able to read for meaning at a very, very young age. And at the same time, you change the curriculum so that it is skills driven so that you are able to produce. By the time a person reaches metric, they are able to utilize a skill to, in order to make mm -hmm. a living. I'll make an example that we've got phones that we use, mm. we've got laptops, but when those um, gadgets have broken down, who do we take them to mm. um, um, to be fixed? Most likely, likely to a Pakistani coming from Asia. Whereas we've got many of our young people that could be doing those um, those jobs mm. at, a, at a basic level of only having metric. That way right. we're able to produce job creators instead of job seekers. Let's have a different, let's have another question for you. You've got the, the headphones on. Hi, D. Kimatala from Rotunda. Listen, what a refreshing, what a refreshing interview we, we interview you having with the gentleman out there. All I am saying is if ATM can match or collaborate with uh, UDM, 
I will be the happiest person and I'm going to campaign for them. I'm going to make sure that I do my best for them to win. Not the ANC, not the EFF. Let them not go to bed with any of these two. Only the UDM. Thank you very much. Only the UDM. Well, you're from Mtata. Yeah, Mtata down the road. That's where your headquarters were. Uh, Port St. John's, you know that part of the world. Let me let me go to Basil in, 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 in Boxburg for you a little bit. Basil, Basil, you got a question? Yes. Um, uh, thank you, Denzel, for taking my call sure. and to your guest as well. Mm. Um, maybe the first thing that I need to say to your guest is, that um, one of the things that I always admire about the gentleman is mm. that his calm demeanor. Mm. I, I don't think he gets emotional about it. You should see him here. He's absolutely <laughs> calm. Absolutely <laughs> calm. I, 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 I really, really adore about that. And I mm. hope that things that he's saying are things that he practices. But one mm. thing, I mean, maybe I've got two or three questions if sure. you may allow me. Sure, sure. The first thing is, I, I always get disturbed when the parliamentarians are giving themselves increases year after year, and yet mm. they say they um, they don't have money for public servants. I, I, I find that I, I don't know what he wants to comment on that. Sure. And secondly, he, he talked about the police. Mm. Does he think the current system that is used to recruit the police of people just running the whole day is mm. it a, appropriate? Or is there any other methods that they would want to suggest? Because I think the, the policing has evolved. I mean, look at the cyber crimes and so forth and so on. So what are, are the things that they are suggesting in, the, in that particular space? But I wish him mm. all the best. There are some of the stunts that they take that I don't agree with mm. personally, but I think he's a great gentleman and I really, really wish him all, all the best. Basil in Boxburg. I'm going to go to Matunjwa in Dundee. And what I'm realizing before I go to Matunjwa in Dundee is you potentially, you, you live around here. So after the news bulletin, will you hang around? Definitely. Um, I, I see the calls are coming in, the voice notes are coming in. So before I go to Matunjwa, uh, if you do have a question for Vuyo Zungula, uh, who, of course, is the president of the ATM, I'm going to keep him here a little longer beyond the news bulletin so that he does ask or answer some of these questions because I've got a long, long question here as well that goes like this. My question to Mr. Zungula is... Is Mr. Zungula happy about his participation in the 194 committee? As a member of 194, did he get questions? And I'll go through all of those, but it's going to take some time. But I'm going to ask Matunjwa to ask his question in Dundee or to make a statement. Matunjwa? Matunjwa, I'm good, my man. How are you? And and, and he's here. He can hear you, Matunjwa. Yeah, I do. I understand. I want to tell you, let me start with you. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what... Since I listened to you, 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 you the, the, the name of Jacob Zuma is in your tongue. I really don't understand. Is is or is in guy, where? Since it's in your tongue, it's in your mouth yeah. all the time. I don't understand. Maybe this guy is also give you a sleepless night because you guys are talking about this MK guy all the time, and it looks like you give him the publicity. Mm. Then let me go to Mr. Zuma. Mr. Zuma. My question to you is what? Would it that Uzo than in Lyon Chase at the end? Near where was the baby? Lago Dandy, Nago Clank, or Nago Tulin for HM, because some of us we like HM. When are you guys coming to campaign in this side or get more maybe members? <coughs> the last one, Uguchi, mm. how do you feel about the NK? When there are one day maybe who need the Maybe in Tangane one you you combine with CMK in followers with you. Then then please stop talking about this man. Matunja giving the campaign. Thank you very much. Matunja, let me don't go anywhere, Matunja. Hold on, Matunja. Matunja, are you still there? Ah, he's gone. He's gone, he's gone. But I'll answer my I'll I'll answer for you, I'll answer my part first. Is is the you know, the ruling party, you cannot ignore. Mm. You cannot ignore 
even other political parties are relating their stats and their predictions and 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 all sorts of surveys are being done about the impact that a former president on of the ANC who is a popular president in KZN and other places would have on a party that's already struggling and where the numbers might be under 50%. You cannot be an analyst, you cannot be a commentator, you cannot be a player in the game if you do not put that aspect also on the table, and hence you have to. So it's not about whether one actually wants to you know, bring him into the conversation or not. Jacob Zuma has forced himself upon the conversation in whatever way that is possible. I'm going to listen to another voice note. Voy, I'm hoping you're making notes on that particular side. I'll take another voice note before we go to the news. And so we've got quite a few questions then that we need to be answering as well. Let's take, let's listen to the voice note. Hey, good evening, Mr. Denzel. Can you ask Mr. Zungul about the immigration issues? Because we are facing this dilemma in this country due to this issue of foreigners. Can you give, uh, give him a chance to say his policy about the immigration issue in South Africa? Thanks. Sure. The immigration policy, and it's one of it's on the papers that I've already written down here yeah, because every single political party is going to be asked that uh, political question. Uh, Vuyo, I'm going to not let you answer any of the questions. The news is going to be in about 30 seconds, uh, and we'll take all of the other questions then after the news bulletin. But let me read this before we head into the news bulletin. So it's also on your table, and you can answer them then in in, in short little answers. The question then is, my question to Mr. Zungula is, is Mr. Zungula happy about his participation in the 194 committee? As a member of the 194, did he get questions compiled by Mpofu? Where did he get the information on Pala Pala as he went to see the former public protector? Did he help Mrs. Mkwebane to draft the 31 questions he sent to President Ramaphosa? Lastly, I am saying that the ATM, UDM and EFF, uh, they denied the South Africans an opportunity to hear Mrs. Kwebane, uh, Mkwebane on, uh, I think, the 30, 31 questions. So it's, it's, you can answer them and just say, you know what, we got them there. You don't have to elaborate just for time constraints. You've got a lot of other questions. <clears throat> and in fact, after the news bulletin, uh, if you've been listening to, to the interview, uh, I've got the ATM president here, uh, Vuyo Zungula, and please please call. Uh, you'll, you'll hang around. I've decided to keep him here beyond the news bulletin, turning out to be quite a popular young man here on the radio show tonight, and people are really, really interested. So I'll take your calls. I'll take your calls immediately after the news bulletin. You're listening to Power Perspective with Denzel Taylor, APM to Midnight. Seven minutes past 11 o'clock of God, Vuyo Zungula, of course, president of the A-Team, the African Transformation Movement, made a decision to keep him here a little longer uh, in, in studio uh, just because of all the calls that are suddenly coming through and the, the kind of statements that are made. Melvin, I do see you, Vusi and Hamanskaral coming through. I also do see you and all the others that are coming through as well. I'll see you. But Vuyo is going to hang around for with us for a little while. Vuyo, quite a few uh, promising, promising. If if I was running an election, some promising statements made there. So you'd be happy about those. But answer some of the questions also that were that were put to you. I'll start with the immigration issue. Once you have millions of undocumented people that you cannot trace if they commit crimes, you cannot even trace whether they were coming, they were criminals wherever they were coming from. Mm. That is a huge national security risk. So that is why as an organization we are saying there needs to be stronger border control so that there is legal movement of people in and outside of the country as well as to deal with any form of trafficking whether it's human, drug or gun trafficking. Now once you also have um, the government going to be very very tough against these companies that are employing illegal immigrants then you are going to solve the problem because If you focus on the individual that has come to the country illegally, you are not going to solve the problem. But when you focus on the enabler, which is the company now that is um, um, employing these illegal immigrants, then you are going to deal with the problem. Mm -hmm. Again, when it comes to now the businesses, you need to have inspectors that are going to go to each and every business, inspect if the person is legal in the country, they comply with the trade regulations so that you don't have people um, like we see now almost Mm -hmm. every week we see Ethiopians being arrested 
in Mozambique, Zimbabwe, and their destination is always South Africa. Mm. Now, if you have those inspectors, they are going to pick up and inform the Border Management Authority um, in order to deal with these um, illegal immigrants properly. The second question I want to deal with is a question of policing. Mm. We're of the view that there needs to be adequate training um, whereby, like um, the caller said, that now the challenges are different from what um, crime was um, you know, 20 years ago. Therefore, there needs to be adequate training and, most importantly, um, have very harsh punishments against every corrupt police officer because they are the ones that ruin the reputation of good mm. police officers that are doing what is required by the, by the law. Then on the question of the Section 194 committee, it was the, the, the lack of um, 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 funding for the um, public protector um, that made that process to be halted. You know, it was not UDM, it was not ATM. And for us, the info that we have on Palapal, it is the info, info, information that is on the public domain. And all of us as an organization, what we normally do whenever there's committee meetings, We look at the issue at hand, we sit down, we ask ourselves what should be our approach. Therefore, there's no one that uh, Mm. um, that, um, assists us in terms of writing questions or um, telling us what to ask. We, on our own, look at the issue and we develop our own questions. That is why whether it's Pala Pala, Section 194, rain manipulation, we're able to deal with any of the issue um, properly. Um, collaboration with other parties. We are, um, you know, in um, good relations with many political parties, especially the ones that are people-centric. Mm. Um, and the question of Dandi, um, I was mm. in Dandi a few weeks ago, mm. um, and again in, um, um, in what's this month, in um, Feb, I've got a set date where I'm going to be going again to the northern part of KZN. So mm. we are everywhere as, a, as, as an organization. Um, on the question of NK, of MK, um, you know, it's good for democracy when people are standing up and voicing their opinions because that is what, you know, democracy should be about, whereby organizations or individuals must be encouraged to make their voice heard instead of having a climate that is seemingly um, wanting to control people to belong to a certain party or if they are not in that political party, then they are called certain names. So mm. um, for us, you know, um, the, the emergence of MK is a good thing for democracy because it means you are having people that are saying they are taking a stand and making their mark on whatever that they feel is wrong in our country. Mm. Matunjo asking us to talk less about Jacob Zuma and then, and then asking a question about Jacob Zuma, <laughs> which means we're going to talk more about Jacob Zuma. Let me go to Melvin in Benoni. Melvin? Yes, hi. Uh, good evening, uh, Denzel, and sure. good evening to Honorable Zungulo. Sure, Melvin. Yes, you know, I have a question here, but if Mr. Zungulo answer it in the affirmative, then I wouldn't give you a scenario of which, you know, I caught. That has sure. to do with Mr. Zuma. Yeah, uh, since we are saying that, uh, you know, he is disqualified from being a parliamentarian, mm. and if obviously he gets a majority, could become a president, is there a constitutional way Mr. Zumula, that you could circumvent that obstacle. Then I'll listen to your response. Sure. If it's the answer is the negative, then I'll give you a scenario that I was given by my constitutional law friend. Sure. Mal- that's Melvin mm-hmm. Benoni. Let's, let's have an, uh, an answer on that one. Um, as far as we know, that uh, presidents um, can only serve two terms. Mm-hmm. Um, so once you contest for the election and get to be elected, that is regarded as a term. However, if you come in as a vacancy midterm, that is not regarded as a term. However, what we picked up on the Mr. Zuma issue was the question of that um, um, his imprisonment, that he was imprisoned, I think, for more than 12 months. I think mm. that is what bars him mm. from being a public representative. Mm. Um, so um, I'm not a constitutional law expert, so maybe we can mm. listen to you um, for the expert, that, um, for the expert sure. advice that you have. Some, somebody put a scenario to me today that said, uh, what if there was a president for a while that then pardoned him and, uh, you know, expunged, in essence, that particular, you know, prison sentence. And then with the expungement, then you, you're a free man. You, you could then do what? What about that? Melvin, let's, let's, let's hear your scenario, it, Melvin. It, it, it's exactly what I wanted to share with you. <laughs> <laughs> you just took it, you know, those words out of my mouth. It's exactly that, because if you, the, the criminal record is expunged 
then he could he qualify, you know, to become a member of parliament. That is what I wanted to share with Mr. Zungu. Let's get it from him on how that could be worked out. Malvin and Benoni, sure. So, so, so the scenario to that would be, um, you know, you, you do the Chalema Motlante thing. Uh, somebody comes in eight, or, and, and, and sits there for eight months, gets rid of the scorpions, <laughs> does this, does that. The charges are then eventually dropped. We saw the charges dropped mm. within those eight-month period. And by the time you come in, you're not facing charges. The scorpions are gone. Some other nice entity is there. And you're, 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 you're not being chased by law enforcement entities. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, you know, if you listen to what uh, Mr. Figil Mbalula actually said about the culture and the nature of the ANC when you are saying that they lied as an organization in order to protect Mr. Zuma on the Nkandla issue, mm. shows the extent of the the death of, you know, uh, you know, proper principles that should be operating, that we should be operating by in our country because mm. it means the ANC lies in order to um, protect themselves as as an organization um, uh, to protect their leaders. Mm. So in this particular instance, um, you know, let's mm. let's see what happens in May. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see how you know the vo- votes turn out, and mm. you know we we can speculate yeah, as much. It's all speculation. Yeah, we can speculate, but I think the people must decide what must happen to the country mm. and the future of this country in May. Let's take Vusi in Amman's Kral. Vusi. Hey, how are you, uh, Mr. Denzel? I'm good, Vusi. How are you, Chief? Yeah, I've ceased to call you a professor. <laughs> I, I have suggested to call you a father. You're so good. <laughs> Thank you so much. all this. Thank you, you so know, much, Vusi. Uh, 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 yeah, listening to all these opinions from uh, all these uh, um, uh, great South Africans. Mm. What's your question, Vusi? I'm, yeah. I'm taken aback by this ATM mm. because they are masquerading as Angels of glory. Mm. I wonder the leader of this ATM party, who is he representing? Mm. Because he's speaking about uh, the recently formed uh, Umkonto Wesizwe, Jimmy Manis, and then he's about to talk about, I think, about Isma Hashud. Mm. These people are the ones who looted the ANC. And then he must stop. Uh, 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 playing with the emotions of Christians because of I've got an evidence here in in Kemba. You know, uh, the ATM is recruiting people who belong to that uh, uh, formerly uh, Omodosos churches, uh, those who fled, you know, those uh, uh, people Mm. who misguided as priests here in South Africa. So they have fled with their tails behind, uh, uh, within their hind legs. So I think the ATM now is taking uh, the lead. It's now acting as if uh, they are going to liberate uh, uh, SA. We'll see in Haman's Kral. Couldn't all be good news. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody was going to phone and say, "Hey, you know what? It's, 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 it's. You know, this is my opinion of, of, of you. The factual, the factuality of it. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna speak to, to the question. Yeah. No, we welcome any kind of opinion because it provides us an opportunity to clarify the air in the sense mm. that if a person asks us what's our opinion on MK, obvious we answer. If a mm. person asks us that. Mr. Manu was your member, and these were the allegations. Mm. Obviously, we have to answer those because that is what we are called to do, to mm. account. I asked the question. Yes, mm. we have to account. Otherwise, the organization, which is ATM, recruits each and every citizen of this country towards taking an active role in shaping our future. And there's nothing wrong when you are um, you know, encouraging people to be actively involved in shaping their own future. I know to a certain degree, you know, there was that... Um, You know, that narrative that um, church and politics do not mix and people um, from the church must not involve themselves in politics, whereas the very same people in the churches get to be affected by load shedding, by crime, by unemployment. Therefore, it's profitable for them as the citizens to shape their future. Therefore, Mm. we as an organization want to encourage every citizen, whether a person is a traditional healer, is an atheist, as long as you are a citizen, take charge and take an, an active role in terms of shaping the future of this country. Let's listen to one of the voice notes and then also I see Bongani in Norkan Park coming through but let's take the voice note first. 
Mr. Denzel, it's a Hendrik Pretoria Central. I know, man. Ask Mr. Zungula, man. Because these leaders sometimes are confusing. You know? I saw him car celebration at EFF. There, in stage, celebrating with EFF. So, I, sometimes I find it difficult for me as a member of ATM. I must also go and join EFF when they celebrate there. I know, man. I'm... I'm Ask him, man, because hey, I'm so lost, man. I, I'm, I, I don't understand, you know, these leaders, you know. Hey, they are so confusing. Thank you, Grish. Sure, yeah. And, and let, me, let me just take Bongani then also uh, in, in Norken Park. Bongani? Yes, I just want to ask uh, Mr. Zungula. Mm. Who does he stand for? Mm. Yes. And who are they? Because uh, you take ANC out of the, out of the equation. Mm. Yes, let's say there, there was no ANC. Mm. And who will they be fighting for? Because it's like, you know, the RTE and, and whatever. Let's say you start a party now without an ANC in the equation. Who are they fighting for? Who are they fighting for? Bongani in Norkin Park. You shouldn't have accepted that invitation to the IFP party, Chief. <laughs> 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 to the to the to the EFF yeah. party, you shouldn't have accepted it. Um, yeah, well, a- answer it. I mean, mm. yeah, they had a they had a celebration, and and Banjolo Misa was there. You were there. Some other leaders were there as well. Look, when we are in these organizations, political organizations, we need to work to learn together because. Mm. If a party gets to be voted for in parliament, it is representing some of the South Africans, which you also claim to want to represent. Mm. Therefore, if you look at the history of our country when it comes to political violence, you find that many, especially the black organizations or black-led organizations, they are made to believe that they need to be enemies. You know, So we are completely opposed to that view. Hence, you find that we are having a good relationship with almost all of the parties in parliament on the Mm. issues um, in the sense that if there's an issue, we focus on an issue and we work together. And if there's a celebration of the ATM, we invited almost all of the parties that we know. The ones that wanted to join our celebration came. Similarly, when um, UDM invites us, we'll also go. When EFF invites us, we'll also go because we need to Mm. teach South Africans that we need to look beyond the T-shirts that we are wearing because Mm. That creates, tolerance. yeah, because that political intolerance makes people to fight, makes people to, um, you know, if you look at, for example, the question of political violence, it's mostly the members there in the communities, whereas mm. the leaders are having good and cordial relations. So mm. the, 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 the lesson that we need to learn as citizens is political um, tolerance and at the same time be able to work together for the betterment of society and not have a case whereby you think alone as a party you've got all of the answers because that can never be true. And then the other question as to who do we stand for, our manifesto is very clear that we stand for our, the citizens of the country. That is why our manifesto talks about what um, our plans to deal with unemployment, crime, load shedding, and all of these problems that are making the, the quality of life of South Africans to be unbearable. We do not have a manifesto that is saying ANC this, ANC that. However, in our practice in Parliament, if an ANC minister, um, you know, is found to be in the wrongdoing, for example, the Mr. Minister of um, uh, Mr. Bladen Zimande, obviously mm. we need to hold him accountable because that is what opposition parties need to do, is to hold the ruling party um, government ministers accountable. Therefore, when we are challenging the conduct of the ANC, mm. we are challenging the conduct of the ANC in relation to how it affects society. When they fight amongst themselves in their conferences and they throw chairs, as in Dao, but in a case whereby when they're in government mm. and they act in a way that is destructive to our society, we have a moral responsibility to hold them accountable. Vuyo Zungula, thank you so much for joining me here on Power 98.7 tonight. It's been a pleasure. And yeah, people people are beginning to, I, from, from, from what's going on here, people are feeling you on the ground. Yeah, it's um, also thank you for the opportunity. And I also want to encourage citizens, regardless whether they've been disappointed, they've not been wanting to vote, but Mm. they need to take the responsibility of shaping the direction the country is taking, particularly because 
the life in South Africa now is becoming unbearable and it will only become bearable when we shape the direction of our country through voting and being active in terms of being politically active. Thank you for joining me here on Power Perspective on Power 98.7 tonight. Thank you it's so been much. A, it's been a pleasure. Um, please invite me again. You will be. You will be. You will be. You've been listening to a Power 98.7 podcast. For more podcasts, visit power987.co.za or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.